So we have a last talk in this session. Um, it's observe offline cross-platform field mapping tool for OpenStreetMap. And this talk is given by Sajet Anwar. Sajet. Hello, everybody. Can you all hear me? Awesome. Um, thanks for being here. This is, uh, this is many uh, months in work in progress, so I'm really excited to show you what uh, we've been working on. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of editors out there in OpenStreetMap, and, you know, the most familiar ones are ID and JASA. Um, so there's going to be a new one, and hopefully you all like it, and I'm here to take as many feedback as possible. Uh, my name is Sajjad. I work for a company called Development Seed. So if you don't know about Development Seed, we've been around for about 15, 16 years. Um, largely in the international development consultancy space. Where we work with our partners to um, create new data to OpenStreetMap, build new tools. Um, so we get, our, we get opportunities to build new tools that we can give back to the OSM ecosystem. Um, we also do a lot of work with uh, organizations like the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team where we look at um, using large-scale satellite imagery to build new map data. And there are a few of us here from DevSeed, so if you want to learn more about the work that we do, please find us. Um, so today, I want to talk to you guys about something that we've been working on called Observe. Um, it's, a, it's an offline um, mobile editor for OpenStreetMap, more like a field mapping tool. Um, works on both iOS and Android. And um, I want to talk to you about how it works, uh, what we've tried to do differently the current ecosystem of uh, uh, field mapping tools in OSM, and you know, we, can take, we can have a lot more conversations towards the end. So a little bit of history. So uh, we started working on Observe, I think, late 2016. And in 2017, uh, we came out with a version along with, uh, with an organization called Digital Democracy. Anybody know or fans of digital? Yes. Um, and, and the World Bank. So observe back then was, the idea was observation. So um, largely in OSM, we try to map things that we can actually verify and are more uh, non-temporal that exist for a really long time, right? Um, but you could observe things that could be very temporal, could be time sensitive, could move on things like traffic, things like, you know, this, say whether this public tap had water at that point in time and things like that. So, we wanted to try and attach these temporal information towards OpenStreetMap features, um, or just map them in general, just to collect more data from the field. Um, so we released the first version, kind of a very basic first version, um, and it failed largely, because uh, I think the things that we were trying to do, especially with cross-platform work, um, the tools just weren't ready at that point in time. So we weren't really excited about the fact that we're having to write two native apps, so we don't want to write one for Android and iOS, so we wanted to use something like React Native. Um, and I'll talk about that later, but eventually we kind of abandoned the project um, in 2017. But um, we kind of kept building on top, we kept looking at the progress of React Native and MapboxGL and tools like that, and then finally, um, Earlier this year, we got another opportunity to start building more tools. So Observe is part of many of the OSM tools that we've been building, and uh, my colleague Mark will talk about uh, some of the stuff tomorrow. Um, and the most recent ones are, one is called Scoreboard, which is, which is looking at more analytics for managing mapping teams, and OSM teams to sort of build uh, an API to have all the other tools around OSM talk to each other with, along with teams and organizations. Um, and some of, some of the other stuff is also listed up there on osmpowerapps.com. So Observe kind of fits in the center. Um, a lot of our partners work um, to generate new OSM data to add it directly to OSM, but as well as um, have their own OSM-like instances where they collect sort of more temporal information, um, like the examples that I gave before. So these tools kind of fit squarely within the OSM ecosystem and gets used by other people as well. So we kind of get feedback from both parties, which is great. Um, so let's talk, so how many of you guys have used uh, OSM on your phone? Wow, that's amazing. Um, how many of you have edited OSM on your phone? That is also amazing. So, uh, 
So we'll talk a bit about the existing ecosystem, and I think there are really cool apps out there. So if any of you haven't tried any of these, I strongly recommend you to have at least one of these on your phone before you leave the conference. Um, so, so overall, the breakdown is there's, uh, there are a couple of editors that are very specific to features. So there's Fire React, which is like only looking at like fire hydrants. There's Street Complete, uh, which is sort of microtasking, only interested in um, new attributes to streets. Um, then there are, there's Vespucci, Awesome Ant kind of uh, have, Vespucci is kind of like very focused editing only on Android. Um, and then there's Maps.me, Awesome Ant, which tries to, uh, which are both sort of navigation apps primarily and then allow people to add more data as they want. So, um, and then there's GoMac, which is great on iOS. Um, the UI could be a little better, but I think it still kind of is a very powerful editor on the phone. So largely what we've seen is that um, primary use case has always been towards like either a single platform or navigation and multi-platform. We wanted to do like something that has editing and field verification capability on both and has can offer sort of the similar experience like ID or has a lower entry to barrier, right? And also has very familiar interface that people can get started quickly. Um, we also wanted to be able to customize easily. Uh, so, you know, things like restrict presets to a certain small set so people don't make mistakes or you don't want, you don't want to confuse people with too many things or be able to sort of plug into different kinds of OSM instances. So there are projects like Teach OSM which want to encourage um, learning OSM in the classroom or there are projects like Open Historical Map, they're mapping more historical and temporal features. So you want to be able to point the app to different uh, OSM APIs. Um, so those are the kind of primary things that, that were in our mind. And um, you could technically fork many of these and make it happen, uh, but you wouldn't still get the same experience on both the platforms. So, so we went and started uh, looking at what we had in 2017, um, used a lot of, reused a lot of the design elements, and then started building Observe. Um, I'll kind of walk through some of the features and then we'll take sort of more technical questions towards the end. So now it works on Android and iOS. Um, it's not on the App Store. For Android, you can download an APK from GitHub. Um, and I can send you the link later, and it's also on the presentation. On iOS, the sort of the provisioning is slightly more complex, but you'll have to get in touch one, with one of us. Um, we also haven't created a production instance, so you can't really edit the main OSM instance just yet, because we want to be very careful. We want to make sure that people are on board with this idea and get more feedback and have enough time for testing. Um, we borrowed a lot of things and a lot of cool ideas from ID. Um, I'm also a great fan of the ID code base. We've, I've also worked on that code base. So we, uh, we borrowed presets straight up. So you could, it's pretty much a drop-in thing. So every time ID updates new presets, you could just copy that into Observe. Um, it also is an easy way to sort of remove things that you don't want uh, to, for people to allow uh, editing in the, in the mobile app. Um, so at the moment, the current version of Observe can only do POIs. So you can only add points. So there are only po point-supported presets available uh, in, in Observe. Um, the primary thing we wanted to do is to build a really good offline editor. So what you see is just here like a, a video of how someone would download uh, an area. So you could go and select an area and hit download. What this does is it downloads the base map tiles it downloads satellite imagery tiles, and it downloads the awesome data, and then stores that on disk. Um, we also do several cool things to make sure, you know, if there's been an, if you try to edit one particular tile on the map, then we kind of refresh just that tile instead of refreshing the whole area, and so on and so forth. So uh, you can assume that every time you go online, there's something happening that kind of keeps the data um, afresh. A lot of time went into making sure it's kind of a familiar interface. Um, it largely looks like a web map with some buttons on it, so, uh, which we've all kind of seen. So um, you can go to the add point mode, play, select where you want the point, 
find a preset, and then add any details you want, and then you're done. Um, you can also switch the layers based on, so whether you want the base map or you want to see the satellite imagery to verify something that you're seeing on the ground. I think one of my favorite features for Observe is to be able to easily edit attributes of existing features. So when you're walking around or going to a restaurant, you want to be able to add opening hours or phone numbers or in case you know that restaurant doesn't exist anymore. So you want to update that information. So you can do that. Uh, there are lots of fields. Uh, you can add new fields. You can add custom tags as you, as you would like. So um, uploading contributions. So when you're working offline, all the edits are stored on device. Uh, they'll be stored to disk when you close the app, and then will be pulled back up uh, when you're looking at the app again. And when you come online, uh, they'll start queuing up for uploads automatically. And we intend to change that automatic upload soon so that you have better control over what you want to upload and not. And then if some uploads kind of fail, you have an option to retry and sort of look at what exactly failed and what you want to do afterwards. Um, I think one of the biggest feedback that we got when we launched a few months ago was, um, so right now each edit goes into a single chain set, so we have better control on the phone side as well as in case people make mistakes, you can just revert a single chain set. So I think we plan to make that sort of a batch edit into one chain set. Um, another thing we try to do is to have some sort of basic conflict management, and this comes from a lot of our conversations with people who go out in the field, um, especially who have teams working in the same area um, and doing several rounds of field work over and over. So sometimes I go to the same place, which may have been visited by somebody else, and we're both offline, and we may have both added different kinds of data, and you kind of get an opportunity to decide which one you want to keep. So this is very basic right now. It doesn't do, um, it doesn't actually do any conflation. It just gives you an option to say there is a conflict, you're welcome to override yours, or you can decide at a later stage. So you don't have to upload. So there is no automatic overwriting. Uh, there's no assumption of whose is correct and who's not. It kind of leaves it up to the mapper to decide what's best. So in the end, when, you're, when the field work is complete and you go back, um, there's still an opportunity to conflate with other tools that are available in OSM. Um, so to kind of like talk a little bit about how we're storing data in, uh, on the phone. So we store everything as GeoJSON, which you know, many of you would agree that it's not the best way to store all of OSAM uh, for a particular area on a phone. But surprisingly, a lot of phones are really good. Um, and we're able to store everything on disk and fetch based on tiles that you're looking at. So imagine just like how you do your web maps, you kind of pan and then load as you need. So we're kind of using the same principles. Um, so we use OSM to GeoJSON, um, convert them into GeoJSON. Kind of, we have a fork that sort of starts tracking the relationships because we want to be able to edit ways uh, in the future. Um, we use React Native. Uh, anybody here use React Native before? OK, cool. I, I don't know if I can recommend, but um, <laughs> um, it's, I mean, it's a really cool uh, software development kit, uh, but it requires a lot of patience um, because there's very little documentation. Things change so fast, so often. Um, but I think, the, I think being able to deploy, write once and deploy for both Android and iOS with very comparable experience is actually very rewarding. So um, if, you all, if anybody's trying to go in this route, I would recommend uh, give it a shot, but if uh, you don't, don't have so much patience and time, don't do it. Um, MapArcGL, MapArcGL has uh, sort of native, native bindings for both Android and iOS, and there's a React Native, uh, a community maintained React Native uh, fork for MapArcGL, which is great. So um, I think we got a lot of questions about like, why would I use Observe? Why why did you build it? And so I think some of the use cases, so I've been mapping a lot of POIs. Um, it's actually very easy. You walk around, you know, open, add a point, move on. Um, 
you can verify existing features. Uh, so when you go to a new town or you're checking out a new restaurant, you can make sure that place actually exists. And some of the, there are lots of tricks you can use. So you, when you pull up a particular feature, you can see when it was added. So you, know, you can decide whether, what kind of uh, edits you want to make. Um, you can also build a custom version of Observe to focus on the feature that you really want. So I encourage people who are interested in doing field surveys um, to try it out. Um, lots of things are work in progress. Uh, we want to be able to edit ways. Um, we will not be supporting relations, um, and we'll try to figure out a middle ground without you know, having um, a lot of trouble getting edit ways to edit. Um, we want to enable sort of GPS recording uh, so you can turn them into ways later in JASM or something else. Um, most often people want to take pictures so they can add additional information when they're back from the field. Um, so support for photos, uh, better restrictions to presets. Uh, it would be cool to integrate certain campaigns from Tasky Manager directly to Observe so you can finish the sort of the armchair mapping, remote mapping, and then have that verified on the field. Um, do more temporal surveys, so we're going to build a s small lightweight API that allows you to attach temporal data tags uh, to some features and sort of keep that, um, keep that going. And then uh, integrate teams, and hopefully that comes from Task Manager as well. Um, please go have a look. Um, it's, on, it's on GitHub, um, and I can also show you. So there are some of us who have it on our phones. If you are on Android, you should already be able to download and install. Um, if you're on iOS, come find me. Um, we also have a couple of other talks if you want to, um, yeah, take a picture. <laughs> awesome. And then we'll talk about more of the tools uh, later. So there's a boff at 4.30, and there's a talk at 5 tomorrow. And that's my email if you want to get in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have time for questions. Anybody? Oh, there we go. Uh, if we're interested in adding new POIs just to the general version, would you recommend just trying to make our own fork and add those? Or is there somewhere we should request that, like a GitHub issue, like pharmacies, for example? Yeah. So. Um, Right now, we've tried to include most of the POIs, but it's actually pretty straightforward to drop in the ID JSON, uh, preset JSON, and I think the next version will have all the presets. Thank you. Any further question? Coffee is not yet ready, I guess. So make use of the time. Thanks. Thanks. Um, I was wondering about the points of interest represented only as nodes. I can understand why you don't want to build editing in yet for more complex features like multi-polygons. But do you have any way of warning users that something might already be mapped either as a way or as a multi-polygon or something like that so that they don't duplicate it? Yeah. So. Um I've been talking with Brian about this specifically also and how ID does, especially because of the filters. I think, um, I think in the next version when we introduce uh, way editing, we would try to limit that so you would have to go into a mode where you only edit ways. And at that point, we'll try to warn people based on the tags that they're trying to edit. So if there are approximate, perhaps if, they, if what, would, what they're trying to edit has very close proximity other features, um, we'll still have all the features on the phone. So um, either the base map or the proximity, we could try to warn something. Okay. Any further questions? i just give you my mic. Uh, so do you have a plan to get it onto the, um, the app stores anytime soon? Yeah, great question. Um, so we don't have any plans. Um, but if there's interest, we would really like to do it. So if, if there are more people interested in using and want to have it on their phones, we would, we would definitely try to make it happen. 
But also, if there are other people who are interested in actually hosting this on the App Store, I would be very happy to help. Any further questions? That's good because I have one. Um, you, you, you showed how when you go to a certain area, you download a particular data set, so you have it in the background. But then in the animation, you showed that I can change into the satellite imagery. Is this part of what you pre-download before you go into the field? Yeah, exactly. So uh, you do the download once, and when you download it down, uh, when you request for a download, it downloads the base map, the satellite image tiles, and the OSM data as a single pack. Anybody else? Everybody's ready for coffee? No, nope. over there. Sorry. Yes, so right now it's a bit arbitrary. I think the limitation is like, like 400 square kilometers, but also, you know, nobody really wants to have so much data on the phone. Um, but that, we kept it sort of arbitrary because we want to evaluate how much data you can actually download successfully, but we might change that when we add way editing functionality. So then it'll be a much smaller area but you could have many smaller areas and there'll be a way to manage that somehow. Question over there? Yes, uh, I'd like to ask uh, about downloading the region. Uh, do, do, do you use the standard uh, uh, Mapbox uh, offline region that, that, that Mapbox provides? Uh, and uh, if yes, uh, uh, have you done anything specific uh, so that uh, the download is fast enough? So we've done a couple of things. Um, so when you, if you've panned the map through that area before, it, we've kind of already added it to your cache. So we don't try to re-download unless it's been a long time. So there's a cache expiry. Um, we also rely on the native SDK's offline packs. So we try to add the satellite and the awesome tiles as part of the same pack so you can manage. So when you remove, you know, you don't go out of uh, sync. So when you remove something, it clears everything and then you can download back when you want. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, but, but it's it's uh, you, you you have you use the cache, but but you uh, uh, so you use actually the the the, the 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 MBGL cache. That's right. Okay, thank you. Okay, anybody else? Am I missing anybody? No, I guess not. Okay, then um, enjoy your coffee, but please you. give a final round of applause to our speaker. Thank you.